Hello there. Welcome to Science for Juniors. I am SRK and she is my lab assistant Binny. Today we will talk about the types of crops and their protection. Oh, you mean we are going to talk about farm and farmhouses today? Binny, farmhouses seem to catch your attention a lot. Not a lot. But actually, I went to my cousin's village and stayed at the farmhouse. So ah, so did you find time to see the farms, or you chose to stick to the farmhouse only? Oh yes, I saw some wheat farms. The wheat seeds. I saw when the farmers were putting them in gunny bags. They shined like gold. You went there in March or April? <gasps> yes. How do you know that? Oh, it is simple. Wheat is a rubby crop which is harvested in March and April. And you said, uh, "One minute, Professor. I cannot understand what you're saying. I mean, what is a rubby crop?" And okay, let's take your questions one by one. In India, there are two seasons for cultivating crops, and rubby is one of them. Why don't we enter the virtual world? to learn about this in detail in this module you will learn about types of crops and the ways to protect the crops in our country we have two main seasons for cultivating crops the kharif season and the rabi season the kharif crop is sowed in the months of june and july these crops are harvested at the end of monsoon Sowing of rabi crops is done at the onset of winter that is between October and December. These crops are harvested during March and April. Wheat is a rabi crop whereas paddy is an example of kharif crop. Oh, now I understand how you knew that I went there in March April. See, it was simple. You know Plowing is a very key procedure in the process of cultivating crops and Oh professor we were talking about agricultural practices Yes I know my dear and I was talking about that only Oh but you were talking about plowing Yes plowing the farmers prepare the soil by plowing it before sowing the seeds and these procedures like plowing sowing harvesting hmm i guess it's time to enter the virtual world to help you understand this in more detail and my friends there i bet you should pay attention on this now let us learn about various agricultural practices involved in crop production the soil is prepared for cultivation it involves plowing and leveling of soil the primary objective is to turn over the upper layer of the soil bringing fresh nutrients to the surface plowing is done using either a wooden or an iron plow seeds are sown in the prepared soil by manually scattering them on the field this method is called broadcasting a farmer generally uses a combination of manure and fertilizers to improve crop yield artificial supply of water to crop plants for their nourishment is called irrigation it can be done by water from wells canals or waterways weeds are unwanted plants that grow among the crop plants and compete for nutrients weeding is done manually with the help of a trowel or by using a harrow while harvesting crops are cut using a sickle or a mechanical harvester the process of loosening the edible seeds from inedible chaff is called threshing grains are completely separated from the chaff by a process called winnowing it is the process of cleaning and shifting the seeds from inedible matter the harvested grains are usually dried in open sun grains are weighed and stored in gunny bags and transported to godowns binny have you heard that proverb a healthy mind resides in a healthy body uh, uh, yes 
but uh, weren't we discussing agriculture? Oh dear, you should develop some patience. Yes, what I was saying was, like a healthy mind resides in a healthy body, similarly, healthy seeds are very important for healthy crops. Oh! Let me show you how to separate healthy seeds from unhealthy seeds. We need to leave them undisturbed for some time. Observe these seeds carefully. Do you notice something? Yes, some of the seeds have settled down at the bottom of the beaker while some are floating on the surface of the water. Correct! The grains at the bottom are healthy and while the ones floating at the water surface are damaged by insects. This is because grains that are damaged by insects tend to be lighter and float on the surface. Healthy grains are heavier and settle down at the bottom. Oh, then these damages must be costing the farmers a lot. How do they prevent crops being damaged? That's a very important question. Let's take this in detail. A large part of the crops produced are destroyed by insects, pests and birds. So to reduce the wastage, crops need to be protected from them. You must have seen those tough human-like figures in the crop fields. They are scarecrows. They help to keep away the bird from eating the grains. Farmers use special chemicals called pesticides or insecticides to destroy the crop pests. Nowadays, such chemicals are used extensively to minimize the loss incurred by crop pests. But do you know the extensive use can be harmful for human beings too? Grains, fruits and vegetables have a coating of these pesticides. It is therefore important to wash them before use to save oneself from their poisonous effect. You know, these days, natural environment-friendly weedicides called bio-weedicides are being used by many farmers. Uh, bio-weedicides? Bio-weedicides use organisms such as fungi and bacteria to destroy weeds. Oh, that's smart! Yes, now tell me, what do you know about green manures? Professor, today I realize my knowledge in the field of agriculture is not really up to the mark. So please enlighten me. Do you know that green manure is a type of cover crop grown primarily to add nutrients and organic matter to the soil? Green manure crop is grown and then ploughed under and incorporated into the soil. Oh, but what are their key characteristics? The green manure crop should possess some desirable characteristics like it should have profuse leaves and a rapid growth early in its life cycle. It should have abundance and succulent tops. Green manure should be capable of making a good stand on poor and exhausted soils. They should have a deep root system. And what advantages do they offer? Different green manures offer different advantages. Some green crops like alfalfa have deep roots and thus they are used to break up and loosen compact soil. Similarly, green manures like the legumes, clover and vetch have the ability to grab nitrogen from the air and eventually release it into the soil through their roots. They increase crop yield. Now it's time to revise the key points of what all we have learned in today's session. Binny and you, my friends sitting there, I want you all to pay attention. Let's revise what we have learned today. There are two main cultivating seasons in India. Kharif and Rabi season. Kharif crops are sown in the month of June and July and are harvested at the end of monsoon. Paddy is an example of a Kharif crop. Rabi crops are sown at the onset of winter, that is during October and December, and are harvested in March and April. Wheat is a Rabi crop. 
The various agricultural practices which are employed during cultivation of crops are preparation of soil, sowing, manuring, irrigation, weeding, crop protection, harvesting, threshing, separation and storage. Scarecrows are used to protect crops from birds. Pesticides are used to kill crop pests. Oh, and I thought cooking the food is what takes so much effort. But imagine how much effort goes in growing those crops which we use as our food. True, so now when you have your lunch and dinner, you will know what a long process the food has gone through to reach that plate of yours. Ha <laughs> ha! Professor? And you know... Uh, professor! Oh yes, so that's all for today from me and Vinny. Hope you had fun. Now it's time for me to take some rest. But you keep exploring the wonders of science.